Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bathrobe Chat Live, where Steve the Missionary goes and dons a bathrobe and talks about his thoughts and feelings from a Catholic perspective or as close to a Catholic perspective as he can because, you know, we've all been there. Uh, my name's Steve the Missionary, and I'm not going to ramble as much this time because um, I, I have a few things to say and I want to pick my words very carefully and I don't want to ramble afterward and kind of backtrack on anything that I've said. So I will say my piece and then I will go. Hello, Sean. Hello, Shaggy. Welcome. Um, today I'm going to talk about three things and kind of they're the three things on my mind and I think they're connected and maybe you guys can help. Those three things are Marianne Williamson, Donald Trump and uh, mass shootings. Um, I am telling people that I am live right now. Um, so the first thing, and I'm going to start, I guess, easy is Marianne Williamson. I'm a uh, part of the the people online who are having a lot of fun with Marianne Williamson, um, meaning whether it's ironic or not, we are enjoying her at debates. We are enjoying me making memes about her. We are enjoying, you know, making quotes about uh, calling the prime minister of, of New Zealand and not a uh, girlfriend and stuff like that. I learned a while back that um, Marianne Williamson was the author of this like massively inspirational quote that like helped me through college. So that's something that is now in my brain. And, um, Oh yes, Sean, for people who are not in America, um, the, uh, Marianne Williamson is an author who has decided to run for president. She has almost no chance of winning, but the thing is Donald Trump also had no chance of winning. So she's up there and she is basically discount Oprah when it comes to like spirituality. And that's how all, that's what her books were. Uh, all of her writing was about this like fake new agey spirituality and some of it gets very powerful sounding and then some of it is just like borderline toying with crystals so the powerful quote that, that was given to me when i was a when i was like 19 or 20 was um our biggest fear is not that we are weak our biggest fear is that we are powerful beyond our imagination uh your playing small does not help anybody and that was a, a, a big thing for me. Like, oh, we should work with with the amount of power that we have, which is so much more than we believe. And that's important if you're trying to be an activist, if you're trying to change the world, if you're trying to change yourself, um, is to remind how is to remind yourself how much power is behind these actions. Um, especially if you believe in God, uh, then you really believe that a lot of power is behind your actions, um, especially when you are working with God. And so Marianne Williamson apparently has been affecting my life for a long time. And then she starts running for president. And when she speaks and when she gives debates, she sounds like a spacey old woman, but she also sounds like um, someone she also has an ingredient that the Democrats and the country really desperately need, which is an appeal to people's souls. Um, and, and more than just an appeal to feeling better than the other team, which uh, the Democrats have spent the last four years not being better than the other team. So it, it's hard to, you know, win that way. Um, and I think really at the end of the day is I don't, as, as much fun I am having memeing Marianne Williamson into the presidency, I don't want Marianne Williamson to be the president of the United States. I really don't. That's a bad idea. We've already memed a president into the United States, and that was a very bad idea. But I do think that, I, I, I sorry, I enjoy that she is there and readily admitting uh, and declaring over and over and over again that our problems as a country are spiritual and moral problems first and problems of policy second. Uh, 
and the problems of policy, especially if you are a politician, are polish, you know, are problems in legislature. If you are a legislative, uh, you know, an elective legislative politician, need to be addressed absolutely. But the more you fix in policy, uh, bad people will still be bad. Our, our you know, moral sickness and spiritual illness will still be present. They have not fixed those. You can make all the gun laws you want, but there will still be murder. Uh, you can make all the murder laws you want, but there will still be murder because we are so sick within ourselves. And it's probably very true that we need gun laws. Uh, and like, I'm not an expert at this. I readily admit we need gun laws and we'll need uh, to, to, to relook at, at what we're doing right now. Uh, but if, if we think that that alone is what's going to fix us, then, then you're being naive uh, and blind to the massive element of your problem. So she'll do things like call climate change the greatest moral issue facing America today or the greatest ethical issue facing America today. And that's true. We have the ethical choice of partying now and letting other people suffer later or, um, or even partying here and letting other people suffer in other places or of, um, of you know, working our asses off to get this done now. Uh, that's a moral issue. That's a moral ethical question and not just like a policy question. And I see that happening in, in like how Marianne talks, which is cool. And I think more of us need to talk like that. I think more of us need to talk like that within a specific Christian framework because Christianity is true. And um, while there is plenty of truth to be found in fluffy Marianne Williamson, new age ism, there is less than to, than there is to be found in Christianity. That's the full truth. So we should do it in a Christian framework, but I will, I will happily join anyone who is ready to call that out, that it is a moral and ethical issue in our country first and a, an issue of policy second. So moving on from that, um, and why I enjoy, like, I, I'll probably enjoy her much more when she's not running for president, um, cause I'm a little scared. So while moving on from that is, is President Donald Trump and how he has uh, reacted to, you know, there have been a lot of these mass shootings under his watch. Um, and I'm not going to blame all of them on him. Uh, that makes no sense. But um, his reaction is, is concerning in that he, he only today was finally willing to really talk about things in terms of of moral problems and, and how he specifically said white supremacy. I think, I think before he mentioned anti-Semitism um, after the, um, the synagogue shooting, um, there was, you know, anti-Semitism is bad. Um, and then today white supremacy and hatred are bad and need to be rooted out of our country. Thank you. I'm glad we can say that out loud because there is deep moral issues within our country and each member of the country. We've been affected by horrible, rotting things. Um, and so, and these things include like our wars in various countries, our, our love of abortion and our love of pornography. Um, you know, these uh, are, and our inability to get rid of rape in our country and all of these things. Um, yeah, Shaggy, there was a synagogue shooting over a year ago. Um, in Pittsburgh, uh, and yeah, we're losing track of of these of these shootings, and so so Trump will, will present that, but then he will also present things like the media uh, aren't helping, and this is primarily a mental health issue, and that w that's deeply frightening to me. This is not primarily a mental health issue. Mental health is, of course, an issue in our country. Uh, and, and people with mental health problems have definitely committed violence. But the, the people that shot up Dayton and oh, uh, sorry, Dayton, Ohio and uh, El Paso, Texas, they were not mentally ill. They were twisted up by bad ideology, by frightening ideology. Uh, so especially so like looking at what the one to know more about which is um el paso that was someone who had been so mangled 
by ideas like the invasion, you know, the invasion of brown people into Texas and uh, and white supremacy, so twisted as to think that this is the correct response. And that that is different than mental health. Mental health is where, in a sense, you cannot be held fully culpable for what you did. But the guy that shot up El Paso is fully culpable for what he did because he did it for a specific reason and was in his right mind when he did it. And I don't, I don't see why the president can't tell the difference and why our policymakers can't tell the difference. And it's probably because of, of, of aforementioned mental, uh, spiritual, uh, and ethical problems within our country. These are, these are things that we did. Um, these are things that were done because of the spiritual rot within people, not because of, uh, you know, an imbalance of chemicals in the brain. The, uh, you know, you can't come back at me and say like a mentally sane person could never do this. Of course they could. Sin exists. And, uh, and that was something that came up a, a little while back when there was an, a, a study that uh, said that looking at pornography, repeatedly looking at pornography does not um, develop into a mental issue. Uh, has the, and, and yet people a, a, across our country and across our society know that that there is such thing as addiction to pornography. That's what it was. They, they said there's no such thing as pornography addiction by the specific definition of addiction, um, that uh, addiction to pornography does not fall into that category. And yet there are people all over the world who are addicted to pornography who cannot let it go. And that's because we can't really talk about pornography strictly in terms of, of addiction. We have to talk about it in terms of the soul and the terms of sin. We have to talk about it in terms of of how I continually go back to plenty of sins. Uh, and so for people who are addicted to pornography, that's one of the sins they go back to, not because of a clinical definition of, um, of, of addiction, but because of the spiritual definition of concupiscence and sin and temptation. No psychologist will ever be able to codify that under the, you know, the scientific method and the me methodology of medicine that's just not within the purview of those uh, of those in you know what are they called methods of inquiry religion has an idea of how to talk about that and you know we don't let them talk about that and so i think the same thing is happening now with with racism and hatred is racism and hatred are being and and misogyny is added in there if you look at some of these uh at like the sh when oh this was a few years back but when the guy shot up um uh, Cal State, uh, Santa Barbara, that was straight hatred of women. And you won't, it'll be extremely difficult to talk about that in the clinical terms of mental illness, because it runs a lot deeper than just the mind. It goes into the soul and into sin and temptation and the rot that happens when, when someone is, is wallowing in so much sin. So while we probably do need to overhaul some of our laws, um, what the president was suggesting, which is uh, um, having better surveillance of people suffering mental health, um, having a more robust apparatus for um, uh, for uh, detaining people with mental health, that is absolutely not the answer to this. Um, the answer to this is to make the make the laws that work, and and to. I guess extra, like outside of the world of government is to cure our ethical and spiritual problems, which is part of what makes, um, you know, the work of the new evangelization and the work of ministry, which I don't, which I'm not necessarily in anymore. So uh, exhausting and so important is because you are trying to work in that field, the field of mending and curing uh, and healing the the problems in people's uh, in in people's ethics and in their soul, which is extremely difficult, extremely thankless, and con and 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 it's a work that you're constantly in failure. So, and we need to be praying for those people. And also, it is um, it does. How do I say this? It 
it, it is somewhat outside of law and politics in that when I would do ministry work, people would want to talk politics because it's, it's a topic people talk about. It's an important topic. It, it affects people's lives and everyone has an opinion. They want to talk about it. And I had to kind of run the balance of, yes, there are plenty of political things that our faith calls us to be active about. And I want people to, uh, to feel the support of their, their church when they go and do those things. But I also wanted to direct people toward the root root of the problem, which was our sickness of soul. And to somehow address that while allowing people and supporting people to work the politics of it, because the politics is important. There are clearly legal ways that we can help ourselves to not get shot up in a Walmart, but there are spiritual ways that need spiritual elements that need to be addressed that cannot be addressed by the law. And I have like, again, I, I have no opinion or no good opinion, no fully formed opinion about things like gun control. Uh, cause I, I don't know what would work and what won't. I don't, I, uh, I, I, I edge on the more gun control, but o- only by inertia and not through like robust study of the whole thing. And so, yeah, if those laws get passed, they will probably help, but they will not cure or heal the main issue. And it would be nice if our politicians at least knew that that main issue was the, the true problem in our country and that their job was, was a, to, a, to an extent, superficial. Their job was to, uh, to create laws that helped us and to support and to allow the people working on the healing to do their job. And that's part of the reason why the Catholic church fights anti-religion laws harder than other unjust laws is because the harder you make our job in healing people, the worse the country will get in a much faster pace than when you pass another unjust law. Unjust laws get passed all the times or even fairly good laws that are, are, uh, are, that have a massive blind spot that will unjustly hurt a a few people or, uh, you know, a group of people. So, uh, to talk any longer would be to ramble and to um, to run the risk of misspeaking. So uh, if you have comments, please go on in the live chat or please go on in the comment below. Uh, but also please pray for each other. Pray for the healing of the spiritual rot of our country. Because that's the one thing we can agree on, hopefully. That there's spiritual rot in our country and in ourselves. And go to confession when you find it in yourself. Uh, a last comment from Andrew Furphy. Um, um, it seems that the fruit isn't bearing, but it's crucial. I think that the hardest part is not being um, a thankful, oh, is ministry not being a thankful service. Um, and and how often it seems that someone's uh, soul won't be healed. And I also want to um, thank and congratulate our newest producer. Um Let's see, where are they? Our newest producer. And, oh, excuse me. I'm going on to my Patreon account, patreon.com slash Steve TM. And it shows all of the people that have joined me and have joined the, the um, have joined on a, on a producer level. So that is... Adam and Alex and Andrew, who is commenting right now, Ben and Christina, uh, Gina, Hugh, uh, who is, I think, my first patron, so I'm very excited about that, Jacob, Joe, and uh, lastly was uh, Mary, Mary Farrow, an old friend. So thank you, all of you who um, go to the Patreon, and I promised uh, it, once you become a patron, you would be uh, thanked by name on this account. So or once you became a producer, you'd be thanked by name on this account. So otherwise, thank you so much. Please continue this conversation and especially, especially, especially pray for each other. The pod has ended. Go in peace.